Carlos, why are you making these videos? Well, funny you ask that, after my first video last week, I got so many subscribers to my channel, I decided to make more videos. Really? How many subscribers you got? I got one subscriber in one week. Welcome back to my garage. My name is Carlos. Uh, last week I made a video about how to lift your car properly and safely. And uh, I, I literally got one subscriber to my channel in the, <laughs> in the last week. Uh, you know, whoever this guy is, you know, I love you, man. <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, the reason I'm making this video is because, you know, I'm, this pandemic is, I'm spending a lot of time at home. I have uh, a lot of time and uh, I've been watching a lot of videos on YouTube and whatnot. So I decided to, why not make some videos? If, if I help someone, if I entertain someone, great. If not, I'll just, you know, have fun in my garage. So with that uh, on the side, you know, I'm not making any money of this, with these videos, you know, um, actually did some research. YouTube uh, only allow you to monetize your videos after you have a thousand subscribers. So at this rate, uh, if I get one subscriber every week, it will take a thousand weeks, so about 20 years. So 20, 20 years from now, maybe. But yeah, yeah, anyways, uh, today um, we are still waiting for that project. The reason I'm lifting my car and the reason I made the first video is because we are installing the radiators, the radiator protectors the, from Brainline. I'm not doing that this week. I'm still waiting for, for something, so I'll be doing that next week. But this week I decided to just make a video about my best lap time at Pacific Raceways. That was the track event when I damaged my radiators, uh, a rock hit the radiator and punctured it. But luckily um, that happened at the, at the end of the event. So I was able to get a lot of uh, laps and I had my GoPro camera in my, my helmet. I got some, I got some nice onboard um, uh, footage. And so I'll, uh, I'll show you at the end of this video. And the reason I'm installing these is because I want to protect the radiators so it doesn't happen again. I'm not fixing the radiators. I got that uh, uh, fixed at the dealer. It was a very costly repair. So I don't want, basically I don't want it to happen again. So I'm installing that uh, my, myself. And that's why I'm doing all this research about how to lift my car, how to remove the front bumper. And then uh, the installation itself should be pretty easy. The hard part is to lift your car and take off the wheels and then take off the bumper. There are a lot of instructions on the internet how to remove your wheels, how to remove your bumper. So I'm not going to cover that next week, but next week I'll, I'll definitely uh, record uh, the whole process and maybe post another video. So this week, because I didn't have anything to do on a Sunday morning, I decided to make this video about my lap time. But before uh, I show you the, the onboard footage uh, of my best lap, I want to talk a little bit about, uh, about track days. Uh, just in general. I want to talk about this guy, Randy, Randy Pobst. He's a, he's a professional racing driver. He has an interview where he's talking about uh, when he broke the record of the Atlanta, Atlanta road race uh, circuit in a 911 GT, GT2 RS. And that's uh, that's a great, great interview. Um, obviously, I'm not comparing this car to a GT2 RS. Uh, they are they are both uh, the same generation of 911s, but uh, you know G GT2 RS is a track monster. You know, it's like 700 horsepower, four wheel drive, rear wheel steering, carbon ceramic brakes, carbon everything. You know, just you look at that car. He has air vents everywhere, you know, scoops in front of the, the wheels is like a big rear wing, you know. But, you know, if you look, if you look at this car and that car side by side, other than all those uh, little, um, uh, you know, air vents and, and, and big wing, it's somewhat same car, same dimensions. You know, the engine is placed at the same place. It is different engine. This is a three, three liter. The GT2 RS is a 3.8 liter. Uh, both of them are turbos, but that one has a much bigger turbos. It's 
makes like 700 horsepower and this one makes 400 but so i'm not comparing those cars but what i'm what's, what i'm trying to say is that the dna from that car kind of trickles down right uh, it, uh, the balance you know how the car drives so and randy in that interview he's uh, he goes on about he, that that he's a very experienced professional racing drive professional he drove a lot of cars in fact that uh, that interview he's talking about when he broke the record of that lap uh, he broke the lap record of that circuit in the GT2 RS and the, the record was already his in a Corvette ZR1. Uh, so he had the previous uh, record at 126 on a ZR1 and then he broke the record in a Porsche GT2 RS uh, at 124, so two seconds faster. The most important about that whole interview is when he's talking about how the Porsches, the 911s, um, improved over time right this is a 991.2 generation uh, of the 911 and before that it was 991.1 and if before that it was uh, 997 996 and his his obviously the 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 basic formula was uh, some is still the same you know rear engine rear wheel drive sports car but uh, this car has, has over 50 years and the Porsche engineers, they have been trickling, right? The basic formula is the same, but they have just making little improvements here and there. And when you get uh, Porsche engineers, you know, working on something for 50 years, uh, you know, you, you end up on this, you know, Porsche, I don't need to even say this, but one of the best uh, um, uh, brands out there in terms of motorsports no other brand has more wins in Le Mans than Porsche. So they have a, hi a history of, of motorsports. You know, they started in motorsports, uh, unlike other brands. And they have a, such a huge history, uh, not only participating, but winning. You know, everything they enter, they win. <laughs> and, and, and some of that DNA, obviously this is not a race car, but some of the DNA from the race cars, it trickles down, right? It trickles down and ends up in cars like this. Uh, so, and, and, and what's interesting in that interview is that Randy, he's one of the, one of the quotes from that interview. And by the way, I'm gonna put the links, uh, everything I'm talking about here, the videos, I'm gonna put the links down below so you can click and just look, just go watch that uh, interview. It's, you know, just because one Randy is a, great driver but he is also very entertaining it's, it's really nice to hear uh, him talking so i really recommend watching but one of his quotes from the interview is a great handling car practically drives itself so he's talking about wh while he was breaking the record of this, this 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 circuit how easy the car was like how, how the car was um, you know and he says Another quote from him, it looks like you are not working hard. Uh, and and he, then he said, yeah, and I wasn't, you know, the car practically drives itself. It was very, you know, not oversteering, not understeering. It was just fast. And the reason I'm saying all this is because I'm going to post uh, my onboard camera. And I want to, I want you to look how easy, you know, just look at my hands, you know, how, you know, I'm not you know, fighting over steer and not fighting under steer with the car. This car makes speed so accessible. It makes so easy to go fast. It's almost amazing. It makes you look good. I'm not, you know, I'm not saying I'm a good driver. I'm actually, a, a, you know, a very much beginner in track. Uh, I, I have a few track days, but the car is fast and it makes you look good because it's so easy. It's so easy to drive fast on this car. And it actually, the speed is so accessible. You know, you're driving fast, you can't believe how easy it is, uh, you know, to, to just go fast. Um, and you don't have to take that from me, you know, take it from Randy. So I'm, I'm you know, go watch that interview. It's a great interview. He's talking about uh, exactly that, how, how, how great those cars, this, these cars are, the 911s. I'm also putting uh, on the links the onboard camera from from that lap he did uh, you know, when he broke the record. So there's the interview and then there's, there's the onboard camera of him doing it. So that's also great footage. 
Another channel I really recommend uh, is the, the channel called Drive Driver 61. It's from this guy called Scott Mansell. This is actually one of my favorite channels lately. Uh, I watch, I've been watching a lot of uh, videos from this guy. So what he does is he watches onboard uh, footage from other drivers and he analyzes the driver's style, uh, the car characteristics, characteristics just by watching the position of the driver's hands on the wheel. And I find I found that really interesting because naturally uh, when you when I used to look at an onboard camera, you are watching down the road, right? Because Naturally, what you do when you drive a car, you know, you're watching the, the road ahead. But after watching these guys' videos, I changed completely how, how I watch onboard cameras now. Uh, I tend now to watch more at the driver's hands because the driver's hands are telling you a lot more about the car balance, you know, how close the driver is to the limit. Is the driver making a little bit corrections at the corner, just like tiny little corrections or he's or he or he is he fighting with the wheel like big oversteer moments or understeer at the corner entry so you can tell all that just by looking at the wheels also you can tell the driver's style you know uh, is the driver like more smooth or is the driver like like fighting with the car uh, you know a twitchy car that's really interesting because when you watch my onboard camera what I want you to do is, I'm giving you like uh, <laughs> instructions, but I, what I want you to do is look at my hands, right? How calm my hands are. I'm not fighting with the car, you know, in any, any of those corners. That tells two things. One, uh, I'm very far from the limit of grip. Uh, that's by design. Um, uh, I, when I drive on, on the track, uh, I'm, I'm there, uh, I have uh, priority, right? Pri priorities. Uh, priority number one is not crash. I do not want to crash my car when I'm, when I'm at the track. Uh, the insurance does not cover track events and you can get uh, track day insurance, but that's very expensive, so I don't buy it. And so I wanna be extra careful. Second uh, priority to me is to have fun when I'm at the track. And third is go fast, in that order. So not crash, have fun, and go fast. So when, when I'm at the track, I'm not obsessed about my lap time. Oh, I need to go faster and faster. So I'm, I'm just having fun. And it, you, you know, obviously I, I'm going fast, as fast as I feel comfortable with. And that's the most important thing. I'm comfortable at that speed, which we will see in the onboard camera. And that seems to be a, a, a limit to me, you know, some kind of psychological limit. I've been to that track many times now. By the way, I don't, I don't track my, I don't keep track of my lap times during the event. You know, some, you know, this is a, a preference of each person. Some people do have, you know, their phones with, uh, with a little lap timer. The Porsches, they do actually, they do have uh, the PCM does have a lap timer, which which I tried to use a few times. In fact, during this onboard camera, I think I was using uh, the lap timer. So I was trying to try just trying it. If you look at my footage, look at the PCM window and you'll see the color of the little, the little uh, uh, circle changing from um, red to yellow to green. That's basically the PCM telling me if I'm faster or slower than the previous lap. And that, you know, it works well. But in, in my opinion, in my personal opinion, um, I find that distracting. Going back to my priorities, uh, I want to not crash and have fun and then go fast. And, you know, when I'm, you know, paying attention to lap time and I'm looking like that, to me, my personal preference, it detracts from, uh, from having fun. Obviously, uh, I do keep track of my lap times, but how do I do that? I usually do that the day after, okay? And that, that's how it works for me. You know, during the day, I'm just having fun, I'm going fast, you know, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, go faster, but not in an obsessed way. And then the day before, the day after the event, I download the footage from a GoPro, I download the footage from my dash cam, 
And then I ana analyze. Oh, this lab was doing 141. This lab was doing 140. 140. Oh, this lab was one uh, was 138. 138 is actually kind of a barrier to me. You know, I've been there so many times, and every time my best lab is the same lab time. <laughs> yeah, you know, it, it, I don't know why. Because maybe it's because you know that's like I said, that's um, that's the speed I'm comfortable with. Um, by the way, I'm not measuring my lap time in milliseconds or, you know, I, I, and I'm not, like I said, I'm not obsessed about lap time, so I'm not going to be differentiating 138.1, 138.5. I'm, I'm, I'm like 138, 139, 140, where it's like my one second increments. <laughs> that's how much I care about lap times at this moment. And that's the point. You shouldn't care about lap times. You know, lap times are... Um, are, are pointless. Lap times are pointless uh, when you're comparing two different cars, right? You, you may have a, 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 a McLaren next to you on the track and of course that, that car is going to be going faster than you. Uh, and at the same time, you have uh, other cars with different tires, uh, different uh, kind of drivers. You have beginner drivers, intermediate drivers and advanced drivers all together on the track. And by the way, uh, most people know this, but track days are not, there is no racing, you know. There is a misconception, misconception of people that never been to a track day. They think people are racing on the track and overtaking each other. I'm sorry to kill your dreams, but that, none of that happens. Uh, track days is almost like driving on the road, uh, but you are in a closed circuit and there is no speed limit. So on the road, you're not tailgating anyone. You're not being rude to anybody. You know, you're being respectful to other drivers. In fact, there are strict rules about overtaking in track days. You can only overtake in certain areas and with, uh, with point to pass. All that is to keep drivers safe, right? Let's say the car in front, the guy is distracted, he doesn't see you. Uh, so you want to make sure that guy sees you and knows you are behind him and he points out to allow you overtake and then only then you can overtake that guy in a specific areas. So, you know, and most of the time you are alone in the track anyways, uh, it depends on the, on the event. So some events have more cars than others, but if you look at my onboard camera footage that I'm going to upload, you'll see that I'm alone during the entire lap. And that happens a lot. You know, you're just having fun by yourself at the track. Also, nobody cares. Nobody, nobody cares about your lap time. This is actually I was thinking about yesterday. I've been to, I've been to so many of these events, and not once I discussed lap times with any other driver. You know, these events are social by design. Not the last one because of the pandemic, so it was a little hard to socialize. I still talk to this guy next to me on the on the parking lot. And we both had masks and we kept our social distance and we kept talking about our cars. But we don't talk about lap time. And that's because we don't care. You know, this guy had a Miata, uh, engine swapped Miata, <laughs> really nice car. He basically replaced the engine with a, a 2.5 liter car, engine from another car. You know, uh, basically, I'm talking about his car. He's talking about my car. We, you, you know, why would he care about how fast he's going? It doesn't matter because his car is so different than mine. His skills are so different than mine that it doesn't matter. Now, if you search on the web, uh, on the YouTube, um, you'll find cars going a lot faster than what I did in this lap, 138. You'll find cars even going 120s. So 10 seconds more faster than me. I'm not saying any of this as an excuse for my lap time. I'm just saying that each driver has uh, has a speed that he's comfortable with. That's the speed I'm comfortable with, uh, and, and that's okay. You know, I'm having fun at that speed, and that's that that's totally fine. One thing to note is is that nobody is pushing you to go faster. Nobody. In fact, the instructors. Uh, when you are at the briefing before the track uh, track day events, the instructors are telling you to go slower. Actually, they they are trying to tell you, hey, take it easy. This is a sport driving. This is not racing. You know, they they keep telling you this is seven tenths driving. At first, in my first few events, I didn't even understand what that means. What seven tenths? 
How do I know if I'm at 70% or 60% or 80%? How do I know if I'm at the 90% uh, limit of my car uh, and not 70? But, but now I realize, because sometimes I take things lit literally, but now I realize that he's not telling you to be at 70% exactly. What he's telling you is that you're going to be far from the limit. You know, you're not going to push like hard. If you, if you look at a professional racing driver, their job is to be as close as possible to the limit all the time. That's what they are paid for, right? And that's why when you see footage from a, a, a racing driver, onboard footage, they are like making those little corrections mid-corner because they are so close to the limit, they have to keep adjusting the steering wheel, steering wheel, wheel angle to adjust for those mini oversteer, understeer moments. Where you're, if you're far from the limit, you, you, your hands are more like stable, you're just flowing, like, like very uh, smooth steering. Um, and, and that's what I want to look, want you to look, that's the, that's, and that's the same thing I told, uh, my wife and my mother when I, when I shared this video with them, and because my wife and my mother, they, they, they worry, you know, when I, when I'm at the track event, they're like, oh, you're driving so fast. You're going to kill yourself. Um, but what I told them is the same thing I'm telling you, you know, look at my hands. I, I told my, my, my mother. Look how, cal how calm my hands are during this whole lap. Uh, that means uh, I'm so far from the limit uh, of this car. Um, it also tells the car is great. You know, it, it, the handling of this car is amazing. Considering it's a rear engine car, um, it's not a mid engine car. So mid engine cars are uh, usually handled better and that's why most um, most uh, race cars have the engine in the middle. Uh, but this car for a rear engine car, the balance is actually incredible, you know. Um, and, and this one also, also has the rear, rear wheel steering, so the, the rear wheels, they actually steer at high speeds to, at, at, at the same direction to give you more, um, to help you with oversteering. And uh, this is something that you don't actually notice, you know, maybe uh, an experienced driver probably will, will notice, but I, I don't notice uh, when I'm driving fast at the track, but I know it's there. I know it's doing its magic. I know it's making me look good in that, in that footage. Um, so that's what I wanted to say. Um, uh, I'm going to now show the, the footage. I'm going to stop talking. I'm just going to leave the engine sound. It's great. It's a great footage. It's like, uh, even for me, it's fun to watch. I've watched that so many times now <laughs> because it, it reminds me of the experience of being on the car. It's, it's great stuff. Uh, I'm also putting uh, other links down below for, of other onboard footage from other cars. Uh, I found the onboard footage from, uh, from a Camaro uh, ZL1 at the Nürburgring. And that's an interesting footage because, again, when you look at the driver's um, hands, you know, the Camaro being a front engine car, rear wheel drive, you know, big V8 engine in front, you know, very heavy and uh, less, less weight on the back uh, side of the car. So you'll see that, guy, that, that driver is trying to accelerate out of corners and he has, he is having big oversteering moments where he's like fighting with the wheels. That's an, a perfect example of a car that is twitchy, right? So it's like not balanced and this guy is fighting with the wheel um so go go watch that onboard camera too it's, it's great stuff and then go watch the Randy, randy's onboard camera from his lap record at uh, atlanta and you'll see how smooth he is you know corner entry and corner exit as well uh, obviously he's making those tiny little adjustments and that's that's the prof professional drivers what they do right tiny little adjustments are fine what I'm talking about is like big oversteering moments. You, you will not see that during that uh, in Randy's uh, onboard camera. Also, another recommendation is um, Donut Media. Um, they have a video about engine placement. So I talked about rear engine, front engine, the, the Camaro, and mid engine. You know, actually the the new Corvette the C8. They decided to move the engine from front to middle, and that's that's because of exactly what, what, what we've been talking, 
they kind of uh, exhausted how much performance they could get from the Corvette in the C7. And the only possible way they could extract more performance is by moving the engine. So it was a complete change. Uh, and, uh, you know, the Corvette fans, the hardcore Corvette fans, some of them liked, some of them are didn't like. But what I'm hearing is in videos, I've never drove the car, but what I'm hearing is the drive, uh, the car, handles so much better now just by moving the engine to a different location because now you have better um, better balance so there is a video from donut media um, about uh, engine engine placement uh, so go watch watch that also you heard me talking about oversteer understeer those are common terms uh, that you know used a lot but if you are new to any of these and you don't know what that means, I'm going to also put the link down below to explaining what oversteer and understeer means uh, in simple terms. Um, and that's how I feel like I gave you a lot of uh, videos to watch, like kind of I'm giving you like <laughs> more recommendations than I'm actually giving you information. But uh, that's because, uh, yeah, I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos lately because of the pandemic at home a lot of free time and um, but uh, but hopefully you'll enjoy my onboard lab which is coming next and then um, i see you on the next video hopefully next week i'll go through the project where i will install the radiator protectors i'll try to make a video about that and um, and post and uh, if you like this video if you want to hear more about any of these subjects you know, uh, I'm doing this for fun, so leave a comment below. I, I'm happy when uh, when someone comments on my video because it shows me, even if it's just one person, <laughs> it makes me happy because uh, you know um, it shows that someone um, it shows that someone watched and liked my, the content. So um, see you next video.